There are two kinds of people in this world, those who have mapped the hand from the palm side and those who have mapped the hand from the back, as seen in this picture. I say that those who have mapped the hand from the back are light years ahead of those who have mapped the hand off the palm when it comes to hand movement. There will be problems with regard to movement on all four sides of the palm if the hand is palm mapped. Here's why. Let's look to the palm side first. Hold your hand in front of you palm up. Notice that the first set of finger joints near the tips is at creases. So is the second. However, the third set of creases are not at joints. Though people who have mismapped the hand as basically a palm with fingers off one side, a thumb off another side, and a wrist off another side, will try to move their fingers at those creases because they will have them mapped as the third set of joints. This causes hand tension and a narrowing of the back of the hand, which you can learn to recognize as indicative of this mismapping. If you turn your hand over so that you can see it from the back, you will be able to locate the actual third set of joints and find where they lie in the palm. You'll see the joints lie quite far into the palm at the major crease in the palm closest to the fingers. You have begun to explode the myth of the rigid palm. Now look to the thumb side of the palm. Notice that it looks like a two-joint thumb comes off that side of the palm more or less the way three-joint fingers appear to do. People who have it mapped this way will display a prominent second knuckle in the thumb and an immobile first joint at the wrist and fail to include in their body map the first bone of the thumb. So the reality is that the thumb has three joints. People without three joints mapped will never move the thumb from that first joint because moving folds the palm and their map doesn't permit that folding. Indeed, many of these people have the palm mapped as one flat bone, like a shoulder blade. In that case, of course, the palm couldn't fold. This mismapping is especially unfortunate for clarinet and oboe players. They try to support their instruments on two joint thumbs and they are inevitably in pain. Now let's move to a third side, the wrist side. To these palm mapped people, the wrist is merely the crease at the bottom of the palm. They always display a hingy kind of movement at the wrist. If you do as you did before, turning your hand to the back, you will be able to find the joints where the hand bones meet the wrist bones. If you again explore where these joints lie in the palm, turning your hand back and forth, you will find that the joints where the fingers meet the wrist are about as far into the palm in this direction as the third set of finger joints were on the opposite side of the palm. Exploding again the myth of the rigid palm, we regain discernible movement at the joints of the hand in spreading the hand as in coming to an octave at the piano. Now let's go to the fourth side, the little finger side. Here we find the expectation that the palm will stay more or less flat as the little finger moves, and this causes a serious loss of flexibility in the hand. The best remedy for this is to make a fist and watch how the little finger bone closest to the wrist moves quite significantly in relation to the ring finger bone next to it. This is a movement it will make many times a day if the hand is correctly mapped. Let's now turn our attention back to the thumb. It is by nature opposable, or as some teachers of young children prefer to call it, finger facing. Some teachers illustrate this to young children by putting little smiley faces on the pads of each finger and on the pad of the thumb and then bringing the thumb to the finger saying, hello, 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 hello. This lets the little children understand that the thumb comes as easily opposite the little finger as it does opposite the index finger. That is, if there isn't some mismapping of the hand or tension in the hand. If you try this yourself and you find moving opposite the little finger is harder than moving opposite the index finger, see if you can figure out why. Are you trying to move from the second joint of the thumb instead of from its joint at the wrist? Are the other joints stiffened in some way? Is there some chronic ulnar deviation in evidence? Is there some compression of the wrist interfering? Is there some failure to let the little finger hand bone move toward the thumb as the thumb moves toward the little finger? Is your wrist mapped as flat rather than curved?